Hey guys, it's Jackson here from Titanic Games, and today we're going to look at creating a fully automatic weapon. All right, so right now if I press play, you know, I'm using the first person example project. Uh, so it does that little, shoots the little ball. Um, but we're going to use something called a line trace to kind of do this instead. Um, just because it's more commonly used, I think, in modern games to use line traces, uh, especially since um, you know, weapons these days fire so fast. So, you know, we're going to open up, sorry, I'll show how to do that. We're going to open up our first person character. Okay. We're going to find this spawn projectile comment and we're going to take the fire input action here, which gets called when you left click. Um, we're going to break the pin. Let's go ahead and just move it out here a little bit. Okay. So what we're going to do is when we press it, right? Well, um, we're going to basically use what's called a timer to fire something rapidly. Okay, so we're going to drag out and we're going to say set timer by event. Okay, now for the event, we need to drag off and say custom event. And we're going to call this full auto fire. Okay, so basically it'll call this event, right? The timer will call this event every however long you define and it will loop it if you tell it to. So we're going to want to make sure that, th that this is looping because it's a fully automatic weapon. So basically if you click the mouse button, it should just continue to fire. And then we'll go with like a, I don't know, like a 0.25 just to start. Okay, so every, every you know, fourth of a second, it'll fire um, this event. Okay, so what we're going to do for this event is we're going to drag off and we're going to say line trace by channel. Okay, now we need a start location and an end location. So what we'll do for that is we'll get our first person camera um, and we want to get its world location. Okay, and this will be the start. Okay, so we'll start from the camera. Then we want to get the forward vector of our camera because that's kind of the direction that it's facing, right? The forward direction at all times, um, regardless of what way you're looking, right? It'll always face forward. And then we're going to take that value and say multi vector times float. Okay, so we're going to multiply this by you know some float value here, which will you know directly influence how far out into the world it goes. So. For a weapon, let's say 10,000. So that's pretty far, but you know, weapons, they can shoot far. So um, next, we want to take our world location and say vector plus vector, and we want to add these two vectors together um, because that will form our ending location, so the end of the trace. Right now, for trace channel, we're going to change this to camera since every object uh, blocks camera by default. Uh, and then we'll just change um, draw a debug type here for for duration just so that you can uh, kind of s visualize it okay so we'll compile and save really quick and uh, maybe we'll add some effects now so let's take the out hit right so if it hits something we're gonna say break hit result um, and then first though let's do a branch off of the return value which checks if you know if the hit was true so if it's true then we will um, Let's spawn, oops, that's how you spell spawn. Let's spawn um, emitter at location. And then after that, we will play sound at location. Okay, and the location will be the location of the hit. And now the emitter template, let's choose the explosion, and the sound will choose explosion as well. Now I am using the starter content, so that's where those are coming from. Um, if you don't have starter content enabled, then uh, that might not work for you. So. Um, next, I'm just going to click this little drop down and change the volume to about 0 0.05 just because the explosion sound cue here is really loud. Um, so that'll just kind of make it a little quieter. And now uh, we should be ready to go, right? So, um, or at least, at least for a second. So if we press the fire, right, it'll go through and it'll start this timer, right? And every quarter of a second, it'll fire this event, right? But now we need to make sure that we have a way to stop this event because if we don't ever stop the timer, it will continue indefinitely. So what we'll do is we will uh, drag off of released and we're going to say clear and invalidate timer by handle. Okay, now the timer that we want to um, clear and invalidate is this timer. So we'll take its return value and plug it into handle. Then hit compile and save. Now uh, we should be good to go. So let's test this out. Let's press play. Okay, and now when I left mouse click, right, I'm just going to hold it. It should start firing every, you know, quarter of a second. So there we go, right? It's just going to keep doing its thing. 
no matter what, it'll keep firing. And then when you release, it stops, right? So we know that it's working. That's great. So now, um, I mean, really, that's that's all the setup you need to do, right? Um, you don't have to do a line trace. You can easily uh, do a spawn projectile kind of thing, like they did over there. Um, but really, this this little core part is what you're gonna want for any kind of fully automatic kind of weapon firing. All right. So um, then, this time value here directly influences how fast you know your weapon will be. So you might want to say something like 0.1. You know, that'd be like one shot every 10, um, or every, or sorry, 10 shots every one second. So if we press play to try that out, I'll just hold the left mouse button, and you see it starts firing a lot faster. So yeah, there you go. Now, um, we could even bump this down to like, like an insanely low number that's really fast, like 0 0.01. Um, and I'm actually going to turn off the debug for this just because it's, we'll get a ton of red lines everywhere otherwise um, but this will be basically like a laser now it's just gonna fire super fast so if we left click you see it's just insane yeah I mean because it's firing a hundred times a second um, which is probably faster than most frame rates you know so usually games run at maybe 30 to 60 frames per second so this gun is firing faster than um, technically the frames are going so yeah anyways that's just a quick look at creating um, a fully automatic I guess weapon so uh, with that thanks for watching guys I hope this has helped and if you like the video like or subscribe and we will see you in the next one